Welcome back. Number one podcast in the world, baby. And episode 11, my homie, my one of my best friends here, my dude, Ra, a.k.a. Raul. And today, today, drum roll, please. We got another sponsor, motherfucker. Hey, shout out, shout yeah. out. Today's three, sponsor. Two, one. Oh, I don't even know if I started the podcast right. Anyways, it's Talk That Talk. And today's sponsor is Rochelle's Jewelry. Yes, we are sponsored by a jewelry store. Get shout your out, bling. Shout out. Get your rings. Go to Rochelle's Jewelry Store located in 4230 West McDowell Road inside the Fry's Market. Yes, inside the Fry's Market, there's a hidden gem with hidden gems, bro. Feel hey. me? They got gold. They got silver. They got diamonds. They got gold. They got colognes, AK. too, man. Oh, they got they colognes, sell colognes, bro. They got colognes. They, they got perfumes. Tell them, tell them. Bro, tell they got everything up they in that bitch. They literally have everything you would need for a gift if you need to get They've a gift. They've been there since that freaking store opened back in like 06, 07 or something, man. Yep, hey, yep. so shout out to Rochelle's Jewelry. Rochelle's hey. Jewelry, established. We know um, the owners. Hey. Very great people. Shout out to the owners. Shout out everybody. Hey, shout Daisy. out Daisy. Hey, Jesse, shout out Janet. Shout out Janet. Jazz. Shout out their mom. Shout out, shout out the dad. Shout, shout out Primo. Primo. Hey, yeah. everybody. But shout out to them. Thank you for the sponsored. Hey, make sure hey. to go to Rochelle's Jewelry. They have 14K gold. They have watch repairs. They can repair your jewelry. They could go play your AK 47s. They do custom shit. And what they wanted me to stress to you guys from a ballers on a budget. <laughs> They have a layaway plan that they work with you, man. So if you got That's something on your eyes, hood. if you got some your eye for your lady, for your mom, for yourself, they will work with you, man. And you can get your piece at a good price. It's quality, and they will get the shit done, bro. Rochelle's Jewelry, they sponsoring the number one podcast in the world today. Thank y'all. Shout out, shout out, shout out. So today's episode is a little different. Usually we don't have shit to talk about. We just kind of ramble on. But today we're a little focused on a kind of a topic. You feel me? Today we're gonna talk about wrestling, and hey. not, not not that nut hugging <clears throat> college shit, which is pretty cool. Still, it's, I like that shit. I see in the UFC all the time. We talk Greco. about that. We're not talking about that Greco. We're we talking about, about that, that entertainment. WWE, WCW, TNA, AEW, NWGP, whatever the fuck you want to call it, man. Everything, all that, all that. Today is the wrestling podcast with the homie Raw Man. What's? Do you remember your first? First experience ever with any type oh, of wrestling. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I remember, dude. Uh, honestly, like, back then, like, I never had cable. So I used to watch it, like, you know, regular ass TV and shit. UPN? Yeah. No, nah, hell no. Nah, not, not even UPN. What? This was, like, Telemundo oh, or Uni okay, Univision okay. or back then. Like, you know, like, I was, like, seven, eight years old. Like, I didn't have cable. So I remember they used to play that shit in Spanish. And they still have the same Spanish commentators that they have dude, right now. And been I'm like, dude, it. like, dude, that's, like, 20 years ago, 21 years ago, hell give or yeah. take. And I'm like, damn, those motherfuckers are still there. But my first experience, honestly, like the first wrestler, I don't know if you remember him, but the first time I ever saw it was like, his name was El Merenguero. No, like, dude, he would come out, is. he'd be like, ah, uh, he'd be like shaking his shit. I can imagine. That sounds dude, pretty sick. He was pretty cool. He was pretty cool. So that's like my first fond memory that I ever had about wrestling. And like, ever since then, like, I just, I just, you know. I fucking love that shit, and ever since then I started watching WWE. So your, your first F one was back then, Charlie so, Yeah, Sick. no, 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 no. It was still WWF. Well, oh, now okay. it's WWE, but but like that, that was my like first fond memory of of like an actual wrestler that I liked. Like he was cool. Like he was like a mid carder, you know. So obviously okay. he wasn't like a like a big time guy, but like every time he would you know he would come out his entrance, he would be like El Merenguero, like his Sick. song would play, and, like yeah, he was like popping. Hell yeah, like, like no, this no shit was Jose. lit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of, kind of like, kind of like No Way Jose. Yeah, so it, it, it was pretty cool, man. That's tight. And ever man. since then, like you know, I started following wrestling, WWF, WCW, WCW. You know, like sometimes here and there, but I only, I only stuck with you know WWF. I was hell into WCW. My dad put me <clears> onto that shit. My first uh, experience with wrestling that I can remember. My dad took me, shit, I don't know, probably was like a swap meet or something, mm -hmm. and there was like a live show, and mm -hmm. then after the show, they let like all the fans go fuck with the wrestlers and shit, you can go mm -hmm. onto the, the wrestling ring and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, and I remember I was little, bro, and there was this dude who's bloody as fuck, like he got his ass wood, he's bleeding and shit, and I wanted to go say like, hey, it's okay, you'll be alright, yeah. man, <laughs> they, they suck, bro, yeah. fuck, fuck those rulos. <laughs> Like they ain't even nice, bro. They ain't even nice. They ain't even and nice. Then, like that. And then like I try to hop onto the to the ring. So mm -hmm. like you know how like it's it's a square box, yeah, or whatever, right? So yeah. I put my hands on the mm -hmm. ring like that, 
mm -hmm. expecting like the bottom was like hard or yeah, something yeah, yeah. so i don't know what the fuck i like jumped <laughs> and then my my legs went into the ring so i was like Woof, boom <laughs> <laughs> ate shit into the dirt bro <laughs> and then i was just like ah, you took a bump ah, yourself and shit you didn't even know yeah. it back then <laughs> you're like all right, all right cool cool that, hang on hang that on that destroyed play. that destroyed my dreams i ever wanted to be a wrestler <laughs> oh man dude honestly they, they put in a lot of work though man they put in a lot of work bro dude. like people say it's fake I mean, Those it's predetermined. Predetermined. It's predetermined. That That's right. like, there's a difference between being fake and predetermined. Yes. But the fucking, you know, the, the bumps that they take, the damage, the, you know, the toe on their body, dude, that's like, that's like 100% bro, real, bro. Like the OGs, Every single they're all day, fucked up, man. They, oh, yeah, exactly. Hey, some of them rest in peace, you know, passed away, but dude, it's really hard being a wrestler, Hell you know? yeah, on the road, like, they, what, they, like they have, 80% they have, of the yeah, year? Yeah, exactly. They have no days off, basically. They play, they probably perform probably like four to five times a week. Yeah. A week for like 52 weeks straight. Bro, they probably have like, probably like one week long. have a crazy workload for people that don't know, man. Like, there's really no off days. Nah, it's like, nah. they travel themselves. Like, they literally oh, drive yeah, themselves to yeah, each dude. show. Fly, uh you know, drive there or whatever the case may be, but yeah. they have to be there at a certain time, you know, yeah. and perform. And still, once they perform, they got to go somewhere they else. Have so to it's drive like, themselves. dude, like that's it's just like, crazy. Only fam. like the superstars have like the treatment, huh? Like exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's so like like the, the the top stars, you know, the top guys, like basically the champions. To be honest, dude, like the champions, I feel like they get you know the luxuries, of course, uh, first class or private bus or whatever the case may be. But them lower guys, they're like, they have to drive Dude, their ass like, out They become there. homies and they're like, oh, well, this is our pack. We mobbing and shit. Oh, yeah, for sure, and for sure. They just do their thing, bro. For sure, for sure. But it's crazy, though, man. Like, honestly, like, at the end of the day, I feel like it's just entertainment. Like, yeah. even though you know what's going to happen, even though, like, you know the outcome, like, it's still entertaining, though. You know what I mean? Hell, yeah. Like, I know it's not real, but, you know, what, what they sacrifice, it, it, you know, it's for entertainment. Fuck yeah. And I respect that. You know I do I mean? too, man, because, like, these guys, like, most of them can transition into anything afterwards. Like, they fucking do movies when they're not wrestling. They fucking, some of them, Dolph Ziggler does fucking stand-up comedy, bro. He's just an entertainer by fucking trade. Oh, and hell then, yeah, hell yeah. Like, this wrestling shit, most of them was, like, their hobby when they were little. Like, I remember seeing, like, videos of Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy as kids, like, mm -hmm. doing crazy yep. shit. Fucking yep. jumping off their houses when yep. they were fucking in their backyard in fucking Charleston or wherever the fuck they're from. Yeah, like dude, yep. North they, Carolina, dude. They they just they just did that shit for fun because you know because because they love that. Like they just love you know they just grew up wrestling. You know, uh, um, their idols were probably like you know Randy Orton. I mean, uh, Randy Savage, uh, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Scotty. You know, uh, Roddy Scott, uh, Roddy Piper. You know, Who's stuff your favorite like, that. like of the OG WWF old school before before the Attitude Era? Before the Attitude Era? Yeah, bro, I'm wearing them right now, baby. It's Ric Flair, the nature Woo! boy, the nature the boy, bro. The it's just, it's just something about him, something about his aura, like something about his like promos, like the way, the way he used to speak to the audience. Like, dude, like you could believe he has mad anything. Charisma. He, I'll Hell believe yeah, he anything he says. Hell yeah, dude. I'll believe anything, anything he, he says. said was fucking gold, bro. Dude, you see, it was gold. It was like, just gold, bro. Oh no, that was Shawn Michaels. He like. Turned on his homie and threw him through the barbershop. Well, yeah, window. well, yeah, yeah. That's that's when like Shawn Michaels, I feel like you know, started getting you know. That's hyped. when Shawn Michaels was kind of like fucking like. I feel like he was just a Mick Carter type tag team. Like he yeah. was he, he was with the Rockers, you know, him and the other dude. Honestly, I forget his he name. He was like Seth Rollins, maybe like two three years ago. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I feel you. I feel you with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like he was with the Shield. But that, you know, that's why when he broke away, like he was like he came the top dog because dude, Shawn Michaels was the man. But bro. Shawn Michaels back then, dude, he was he was a heartbreak kid, man. Dude, he fuck summer. God damn, mm, mm, mm. bro. Mm. These WWE chicks, man. Hey, Can when it, they said they had groupies, dude, they had they fucking have groupies. groupies man. Rick Flair be talking about he's had sex with like over ten billion women. He's like, I fucked everybody in the planet, basically, man. Bro, he had more pussy than fucking Will, Ch Will Chamberlain and Magic Johnson combined. Shoot, I Magic feel, Johnson. dude. Yeah, and Magic Johnson had HIV. I'm allegedly, just saying, bro. Yeah. Allegedly, bro. Allegedly, allegedly. allegedly. Uh, that's what I heard. I heard it crazy. You heard a conspiracy theory about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, I heard about that. That, that. Fool, that fool like did some fucked up shit. <laughs> yeah, so that's had to, why. Had to come out with I got AIDS. Yeah, had about I got AIDS type shit. Yeah, because he was I mean, too long, man. Yeah, exactly. Because honestly, what happened to Easy E? He had HIV too, and he died real quick. Real and that was like around the same time period. I understand now. There's like drugs and shit that like literally like you can't transfer it or whatever. True, true. But back then. That uh, show's pretty new, man. Well, to the public, at least. If you got money, you probably could have got it. 
But Easy had money though. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Maybe. So but Easy, Easy had money the same. Uh, Allegedly. Eh. I don't know. We live it up to conspiracy. Yeah, man. Conspiracy, bro. <laughs> Who knows the truth? Who knows the truth? Exactly. The truth's out there. They're like you know, like X Files says. <laughs> You didn't fuck with WCW that much? I mean, honestly, like I said, you know, back then I never had, you know, cable. So oh, yeah, honestly, like cable, I man, never, TNT. Uh, yeah, uh, TNT or whatever the hell the channel was back then. But I knew of the wrestlers, you know, like Goldberg, Booker T. Sting. Obviously, Sting was like the motherfucking, the franchise. He was like the face What'd of you WCW. Think of Sting when before he was like, <clears throat> like the blue, not the blue, the black and white face. Did you ever... See any of his shit when he was like the colorful faces? But no, honestly, I never thought I never thought like Sting would be where he's he was at with WCW with WWF back you know back in the day now WWE. Like I never thought like I thought honestly he would just be like a good ass mid Carter, but he just elevated his game once I think, he went like, to WCW. Bro, bro. Like the NWO, like Sting owes a lot to them, bro. I feel like at that point in time. Mm-hmm. He was like the anti-hero, and the NWO was over here fucking shit up. And he oh, like, for real, for real. And then yeah, when he joined sure. them and did the wolf pack for with sure. the red face. Ooh, Dude, that shit was lit, That's the bro. coldest shit I've ever seen in my life. Hey, fun fact, though. Well, not really a fun fact, but I've heard conspiracy theorists, anyways, that Vince McMahon told Kevin Nash and Scott Hall to invade, you know, WCW so he could take over. That's why, you know, they gave him that lucrative deal when they signed with well, you know when kevin nash and scott hall signed with them so when they went from wwf to wcw yep. it was all vince mcmahon's idea yep. and then, like like vince mcmahon's like, like hey bro just go ahead and you know do your thing whatever you gotta do like you know make them pay you whatever you want and then you know dude he's a snake dude, bro because shale tonin from a uh, ufc espn uh-huh. he just came out and said that when he fought anderson silva uh vince mcmahon offered him <clears throat> five million to not show up not show up to the fight and show up to Raw the next day, and then no way, and, for real? and then if he had won the title, yeah. he would have given him like twenty five million to show up with a title on Raw the next day. Damn, for real! What a snake, bro! That fool hey, got hey, money out hey, the hey, ass. Hey, Vince McMahon's all about money, though, baby. He does. He's, like, he's all about money, bro. Like nowadays, honestly, I've been <clears throat> hating on him so much. I feel like he's fucked up the product because, like, for the last oh what, for sure for sure. Besides the last three four months, WWE was whack, bro. It was no honestly though. Uh, honestly though, I feel like to me. To me, yeah, yeah, exactly. I feel like the the last five years has been like so predictable, so repetitive. Like they do the same shit every single Hell time. Yeah. Every dude. year is an underdog, and it's always the same guy. Like, yeah. dude, giving other people a chance. That's what made the Attitude Era great. I feel like to me personally, everybody was a superstar. yeah, everybody was a superstar. Everybody was a superstar. Look, you had The Rock, you had Stone Cold, obviously Undertaker, Mankind. Kane, Mankind, dude. Even the mid card is lit. Godfather. Val Venus. Bro, their characters. Dude. They used to have a pimp and a porn star Dude. on the roster, bro. Like, honestly, when I was eight years old, I never thought, you know, all the sexual in- in- innuendos that, I didn't that get Val Venus did. Yeah, I didn't get that. I, I was like, I, I was like, why, why is there a Wait, drill? Oh, here? Who's that? Dude, I didn't know now, that Now was. I know why my mom used to get mad. I was like, why the fuck is the drill, you know, drilling through the drill, the flower blossoming, the hot dog in the buns? Ooh, I was like, what the ladies. hell? Like, Hello, ladies. <laughs> I was like, dude, what? Like, what the hell? Like, I don't like. I, I used to get the tower too, the white tower, and the fucking, you know, <laughs> do the thing with Val Venus, dude. That shit was lit, dude. Yeah. I, and then you know, Godfather with this, with this whole train of hoes. I know. I was just like, and I, I was like, the whole hey, train. I want to, I want to do a whole train. train. Like, hell yeah, dude. And my mom used to get mad, like, hey, paga esa chingadera. And, and I was, I was like, like, mom, what the hell? I was like, mom, it's just wrestling. It's wrestling She's like, mom. nah. But now as you get older and you understand, you're like, ah, now I get it. Yeah, <laughs> now now I, I get why. You nowadays, know I mean? like, hella friendly. But like, recently, it's all PG. recently, it's all PG. they've been cussing a little bit. A little bit. Like, a little bit. Slowly Natalia, but surely, Natalia I feel like. just called Becky Lynch a bitch and fucking oh, yeah, hell yeah. And Kevin then, Owens told Yeah, Shady and then Man, Lacey Evans, you know, trying to get in the ring all, you know, all sensual, dude, all sexual and shit, Becky dude. Lynch and I was like, face. damn. Did you see that shit? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. that. Like, I saw hit, that, hit. dude. That was like, it was like that was like when, uh, whatchamacallit, Nia Jax punched the shit out of Becky Lynch, too. Oh, yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. She she got in trouble for that shit, huh? Like, she hasn't really dude, done that Dude, I haven't seen her ever since. I don't know. Like, online, they say she wasn't happy with her contract or whatever, or like, her mm-hmm. place in the show, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Vince McMahon be wild and remember Vince McMahon fucking almost fired uh Ty- what's his name Titus O'Neil for oh, touching yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, for touching Bruh, him. What the fuck? I mean, what he fired? What the fuck was his name? Uh, Paul London. Remember when they did that whole explosion? 
When he was oh, walking down he and he was like character. smiling. He broke yeah, he character. broke character. He's all smiling and shit. Yeah. And he fired him real quick. Damn. Dude, I honestly believe that shit though. When 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 that shit happened, I was like, damn. Bro. I was like, I saw him go into the limousine. If you don't know the situation, the let me give you some backstory. So Vince McMahon's the owner of the WWF, WWE. Can't remember what it was at the time. Yeah, he's the CEO. Um, it, was a, it was a WWE. So yeah, WWE. Yeah. And he he's basically like God. So everything goes by him. He kind of creates the stories. He does have writers, but he has to approve them at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And he thought it would be fucking genius for there to be a storyline where... He's like, I'm retiring or whatever the fuck yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then he has all the wrestlers up on the stage like, oh, peace out, Vince. We love you, blah, 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 blah. And then he thought it would be an excellent idea to hop into a limo and have that shit explode. Like literally, like, literally blow explode, up. Blow, like, blow up. Blow up. Shit destroyed. Mm-hmm. And then we were supposed to believe that Vince McMahon was done. Like that was it. So what would have what would have happened? He would have just been behind the scenes the whole time since then. I guess so. Yeah, like somebody else would have ran and probably like his daughter Stephanie or his son Damn, Shane. Or imagine something. how different it would have been. But dude, that that shit was just wild. When so, I when I first saw that, I was like, what the. I was tripping. Me and my dad was, were tripping. We were like, what the fuck? Se murió. Lo mm-hmm. a matar, yeah, yeah, that's what I said too, dude. I was like, hey, is this shit like scripted? I was like, I know wrestling's freaking pretty Cause, determined, but because raw, raw used to be live, and then if it went too long, it would mm-hmm. it would bleed it into would, the yeah, next show. Yeah, and then if and it, it went cut too off. long, it would, and it cut, would cut off. off. It would cut off. And then yep. that's exactly how it went perfectly. Yeah, it was, like it was, it was like, like simultaneously. Say, say like, it was supposed to be over at ten. It was probably like ten oh four, and then. Cut, yep, black and screen cut. and then the next show is just midway through already and you're like, like you're wondering the like what the fuck and like, then internet happening? like nobody really had internet so not like, really this was like 2005 2006 i mean yeah. you know internet was popping back then but not everybody yeah, had it you know what i mean had it. and not everybody had the sources or you know the exclusives yeah. type shit you know back then so obviously like, hella you didn't know boy. so you're like oh dude you have to wait till like, next monday like dude what the fuck happened like is this shit real like you over here Trying to go to school and shit, go to like Google friends, or like, YouTube. Yo. Like, hey, what the fuck? Like, hey, you know, like, Vince McMahon died, bro. hey, did, did he really die? But, but that storyline did not work out. Oh, not at all. Tragically, not the at next all. day after that, uh, what I think it was like, what the fo- was it this next day or like the following week? Because there was a pay per view that was scheduled in between that, right? Yeah, 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 there was. So, say that happened on a Monday. So, like, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, mm-hmm. Saturday, rolled through. Sunday, there was a pay per view. And Chris Brenwall was supposed to fight. Who was he supposed to fight? I can't Honestly, remember who was, who Honestly, supposed to fight. who was supposed to fight. Somebody. I think it was like a title match, though. And then nobody could find Chris Benoit. All his people, Chavo Guerrero, was looking for him, trying to call him, mm-hmm. hit him up and yep. shit like that. Yep. And then, tragically, man, who knows the truth behind this, but he murdered his own family. Yep. I mean, oh, honestly, man. people people blame it on the you know on the on the too many head bangings, too many CTE, you know, man. CTE and all that. But allegedly, again, you know, there's a conspiracy saying that he got framed. You think by, so? I didn't heard that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I heard that Break shit. Down. Oh, shit. He got framed allegedly by his wife's ex husband, who always who also used to be a wrestler. What the fuck? Honestly, I forgot his name, but that's that's. What allegedly, you know, conspiracy? Because, and Damn. again, they you were know, they were drugged, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard too. Yeah, that's what I heard too. But Damn. allegedly as well, you know, once Eddie Guerrero died, I don't know if you ever saw that segment on Raw. You know, rest when, in peace, when, Eddie Guerrero. Hey, bro. hey shout out to Eddie Guerrero. Like, he was, one of my he was the wrestlers. goat. He was the goat. No debate, dude. My dad used to watch that shit. Like he would be like, "Hey, Mijo, like you know, you know Eddie," and I was like, "Hell yeah, I know Eddie!" Like he's he's sick as fuck. Like he's sick as fuck. Like, like you know, I was just flipping through channels and shit, and, and I saw wrestling, and I saw him, and I was like, "He's Latino and shit." So you know, like dude, hey, I shout out with all the Latino dude, wrestlers, dude. Like, like he was just psychosis. So, yeah, hell yeah, dude. Uh, what was that fool's name? Uh, oh, dude, he was from ECW. Who was the the crazy guy that always did moon salts off of shit? Uh, Juventud Guerrero? No, no, no. He started him too. Juventud Guerrero. He's sick. He was ECW, bro. He had curly hair. Fuck. His name was like some super crazy. Oh, super crazy. Super yeah, crazy. yeah. That fool was super wild, crazy. dude. Fuck yeah. That fool was a high flyer, dude. Like he was just like he was Los little, Mexicos. He was you remember Los Mexicos? Los Mexicos. Hell yeah, Mexicos. Dude, those those, 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 those fools were lit. Those fools were dude, lit. Dude, when the filthy animals showed up on, I think it was like Raw. <laughs> they were just front stage. At, oh like, yeah, the yeah, beginning yeah. of the invasion, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Was that. I remember tight. that, dude. That shit was lit. They were just there, fucking Eddie Guerrero, his hair all wet, just like what's up, bitches. Dude, he had China. He had China like a little mamacita, you know. 
mamacita, bro. Hey, like, mamacita. I wonder who came up with that shit. I, I don't know. Hey, but rest in peace to China, though. Yeah, man. Hey, man, she was she was the you know ninth wonder, see, eighth wonder of the this world. This is what we're man. talking about, bro. Because like this is what I mean. See, wrestling what I mean. has so many consequences. The behind the scenes, they get hurt, they start taking pills. Exactly, and then, like, man. Like. I don't know if like their wellness program was different back in the day, but like they a didn't have a wellness program. At was all. like on their own, bro. So they would try to figure shit out on their own. Yeah, like Jake the Snake would be like, "Oh, I'm taking hella pills because I have to fucking exactly. fight the next morning." Again. Or drinking, dude. Like you know, just to, just to numb the pain away, bro. Like yeah, honestly, yeah. people, I feel like people don't respect it because they feel like it's fake. It's fake, but it's not fake, dude. It's just predetermined. It's all. It's like, like obviously they know, you know, they it's know like what a mean the outcome. Ass ballet, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's honestly, dude, ballet. like like they know what's gonna happen. Obviously. But, you know, they still have to go out there, you know, and perform. You know, it's an art, too. Like, I, I've heard, like, you know, like, the wrestlers used to practice their, you know, their their matches or whatever. Like, oh, you know, hit me yeah, here. Yeah, there's, do like, this videos here. of, like, like oh, The Rock bro, and, like, Triple H practicing their matches in yeah, an empty arena and shit. yeah. Yeah, hey, but I've heard that Brock Lesnar doesn't do that shit at all. I, yeah. Like, not at all, bro. He just shows up. He'd just be like, he'd be showing up. He'd be like, all right, I'm going to suplex you here, suplex here, fucking F5 here, it's over. Dude, remember? Like, that's it. Was it Royal Rumble or what pay-per-view was it that he fucking stuck uh, Braun Strowman right in the dome? Or like, right on his jaw. Oh, yeah, he well, because, like, because Braun Strowman, you know, hit him first. And he's like, hey, I need to fucking chill the fuck out. And he just like, fucking <laughs> socked him, the bro. Him and, like, Brock Lesnar must be the them. scariest motherfucker to wrestle. Nah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Hey, but Eddie beat him, though. Hey, hey. I, I, I read I read somewhere, too, though, that to this day, Brock Lesnar, um, every time he sees Vicky Guerrero, says that he still misses Eddie, dude. I would, too, man. Yeah, dude. Bro, I hated, like, after Eddie passed away, they put Vicky Guerrero on some stupid-ass stories. Yeah, man. Honestly, I, like... It was, I was Edge's like, side piece, bro. Dude, like, I didn't, I didn't like that shit on, at all, bro. bro. Like, that was... I just felt like Come that was disrespectful on. to Eddie. It was just To dumb, his wife. Bro. Like, to everything in general about Eddie's legacy, dude. Like, I... And then they had uh, Rey Mysterio and Chavo go at it after that shit, too. Nah, yeah, I know. Like, it was, so just... it was dope matches. I remember they were fucking dope. They were doing, like, hardcore, no DQ type matches yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah. But, like, they could have, like, done a sick-ass tag run instead or something. Nah, that's true. That's true. But, I mean, honestly, I feel like it was a good and bad thing. Obviously, it was a bad thing that Eddie died, you know, because the way, you know, the way he went out or whatever. But I feel like it was good. It benefited Ray because if Eddie would have never died, he, he would never won the dance. world, the he world heavyweight championship. Title. Bro, Ray Mysterio Mass was the <clears> most <throat> underrated wrestler at that time, just for being little. Oh, for like, real, for sure. Vince McMahon, for sure. like ever since the like the eighties, nineties, he's always had the image that his champs have to be big old, yeah, big old buff, buff dudes, dudes, like literally like, bodybuilders. Eddie dude. was a skinny dude, and he got fucking jacked, bro. He did. He, he did. got jacked, he did. man. He he worked his ass off for that body. He yeah. did. He's like what, forty years old too. He's like 40, 40 something. Hell yeah! Like he, he worked his ass off for that yeah, shit, bro. bro. Remember those three amigo suplexes? Oh hell yeah, dude. hell yeah, dude. He put in work, bro. That's, dude, that's no easy feat. Dude, honestly, like my fondest memory of Rey Mysterio is once is when he won the, you know, when he won the championship. Dude, dude that shit was just like they, lit. That was probably like one of the most perfect storylines. He won the Royal Rumble, wasn't he? Like one or two or dude, something. Dude, he was like the yeah. I think he was like the first one, first or second one. He has like one of the highest records. Yeah, one of, of the uh, highest records. Because I, I believe Rumble. like Shawn Michaels had the other record or some shit. Like or came second. Cause Shawn Michaels came like third, second or third, and he won a Royal Rumble back in the day too. But Rey Mysterio literally wrestled for like an hour and a half straight, bro. Yeah. Like he's a little ass motherfucker. Obviously, you have to have the stamina, you know, the ability for you to get in there and take everybody out or it's you, like, whatever. It's a UFC fight. But you can't hit back sometimes. So sometimes you just get your ass beat, bro. And exactly. Like, it's real. Exactly. It's fucking exactly. real. Like you really get Dude, that hit. shit was lit, bro. That shit was lit. And then who do you who do you win the title from? Like Bautista or some shit? Or was it Randy Orton? I don't know. To I, be gonna, honest, I need to Google man. it, bro. It's gonna bug me. <laughs> I don't I don't know Let's to be honest. Ray but... Mysterio. Well he won that shit though. I remember that shit. It was crazy. Like, I I remember him just holding that title and I was like, damn, like bro, like my boy finally made it. Dude, it was tied, bro. Just like, just like I remember when uh, Eddie Guerrero won that shit in No Way oh, Out. It was a triple threat match with Randy Orton and Kurt Angle. Shout out, bro. Kurt Angle. Uh, Let's talk about Kurt Angle, bro. Bro, bro. Kurt Angle the goat. He's the Kurt Angle the goat. Eddie Guerrero was up here. Hey, yeah, Eddie Guerrero was up here. Kurt Angle was like right next like, to him. Yeah, I feel like Kurt Angle is like right next to him, Dog, man. He's a fucking Olympic gold medalist. The only Olympic gold medalist Until in Henry WWE history. Through. Until Triple C rose Only. Through. 
Olympic gold medalist in WWE, WWF, whatever the fuck you want to call it, history, it's man. The only one legitimately, legitimately, one with the broken freaking neck. With the broken freaking neck, dude. I still remember when he debuted. I f- <sighs> something, something Stasiak. It was something Stasiak. Sean, Sean Stasiak. Yeah, there you go. I remember. That's him. who he he debuted with. He whooped his ass. He was obviously. supposed to be like the guy too. Just because yeah, he was yeah, he was supposed buff. to. Yeah, yeah. And you know, he had um, I guess his um, his dad or grandpa or whatever. Like you know, he he, he was a second generation uh, uh, WWF WWE wrestler. I think that's wrestler. super dope. Vince mm-hmm. McMahon actually like. The last chance I like, he gives him the chance, bro. Oh, like, hell yeah, hell yeah. Second generation, hell yeah. He'll put and, them and, on. and that's cool though, and that's cool, and I respect that though. I do too. You know what I mean, like. Cause he's giving, you know, um, other, you know, other prospects, other, other family members, you know, a chance to shine into the. You think WWE. he expected Randy Orton to be? Oh hell super, no! I don't hell think so no. either. Hell no! Little baby face dude. Hell no! No. Nope. Dude, Randy Orton is a beast. Dude, bro. Randy Orton is a fucking savage. Honestly, back then I hated him, but now I know why I hated him. He was a good heel. He was good. Like heel. he was just that a good smug motherfucker. He was, yeah, he was just young. Smug. Like you know, he he had that. He had, he had everything. He had the body. He had the face. He had the attitude. He had the like, he dude, talk. He was with Triple H, Ric Flair, and Batista. Like, Bro, come on, dude. Like, that's probably like. Come on, dude. We're, we'll get. Want to get into factions right now or not? No, yet? no, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. I'm just saying. I'm just saying though. Like the way he elevated real quick. Like, I respect that. I respect Randy Orton. And he's still killing it right now. Hell yeah, he's still killing it. You know what? What is it like? 14, 17 years later, or whatever. It's crazy. Like he's like, still killing that we shit. We literally dude. watched his whole career. We literally did. We literally did, man. Hey, it's super wild. Hey, Randy Orton is it's top. He's top. top he's top, man. He's Fucking top. The Viper. The Hell legend yeah, killer. The legend killer. Dude, when he was doing the legend killer days. He was just checking them off, bro. Dude, he was just checking like, them all off, man. It's mankind. The Rock. Just like everybody, and then Triple his H, move, bro. Rick oh, Flair. dude, the RKO is arguably one of the sickest wrestling moves because you can hit it on anyone at any time. That's true, though. That's true, though. I think like for finishers, <laughs> that's an important thing that you can hit it on anyone at any, any time. time. At any time, like you don't even expect it. Like I don't know, we're just like boom, yeah. And it became a meme. Like, dude, that's like dude. that's like that's like hardcore. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that's a, like once you made it, once you made you know top top trend viral, whatever. Like, dude, just out of nowhere, and uh, obviously you know. uh what you gonna call him? Uh, Ross? What's his What's his name? Ross? Uh, something? Uh, <laughs> Traplor Ross? No, 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 no. Rick the, Ross. The comic, the commentator. Oh, Jr. Jr. Yeah, Jr. What the fuck did I say, Ross? For? <laughs> Jim Ross. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good old Jr. Yeah, good old Jr. Just like made it more. Uh, like believable, like dude. dude like he, he hyped it up so much. It's like, oh my god, here comes Randy Orton. I don't know where Dark Hill. Like he killed him. Like, dude, oh my god, he somebody broke his call back. the paramedics. <laughs> like, by God, yeah, yeah, by God, dude. dude, that shit was lit. Jr. is a beast too, man. Mm-hmm. Shout out Jr. Hall of Famer for show. I liked oh, how hell. how he's been able to carry on his career <clears throat> at his age outside of the WWE. Honestly, man, I felt like I don't know why WWE let him go. JR is way better than Michael Cole. Michael Cole, it I feel like he's just be, dude. I hate Michael Cole. Repetitive, dude. Like he just blocked me on Twitter, repetitive, bro. Repetitive, repetitive. I hate Michael Cole with every <clears> cell <throat> in my body, man. Because I I said like one joke. Like there was like a famous person behind him, yeah, and I was yeah. just like, yo, I bet blah blah blah. I was talking shit behind Michael Cole. Yeah. He fucking blocked me on Twitter, bro. Like what wow. the fuck? <laughs> he's a fucking hater. He's a fucking pussy, bro. Fuck Michael Cole. <laughs> when I get when I get that WWE show appearance one day. I'm going to be like, hey, Michael Cole, hey. you blocked me, you bitch. What the fuck? That's what The Rock says. He's a jabroni. Jabroni. Hell yeah. He's a shitty ass heel commentator. Oh, for real. For sure. For I'd sure. rather like Corey, sure. Corey Graves is a way better heel commentator than Michael Cole. I don't know, man. Honestly, I feel like Corey Graves is just annoying. Like you he think just so? He just talks and talks and talks. Like He talks too much. But like, like, it's just it's just so predictable what the hell he's going to say next. That's I like, true. Like, that's true. I know, I know he's a heel commentator. You know, y'all always got to have the good commentator and the heel commentator, but I just feel like he's just so predictable bro it's like, like he has like a button in his pants yeah, like, like, like wow. i know exactly what you're gonna say next like dude like that was devastating like oh my god like yeah we're like michael cole how do you dare you know like and so blah 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 like, just, it, was, it was crazy how they let jerry lawler be like perverted as fuck oh hell yeah, hell career, yeah. especially in the attitude era dude like <laughs> the puppy dude that shit was lit. <laughs> That shit was that lit. That fool hosted like probably that fool probably has a world record for hosting the most bikini contests ever. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> he used to get excited, excited, my guy. Like my guy used to jump in the motherfucking ring. He'd be like, damn. 
Like, dude, he was happy to host them segments. Dude, yeah, he, he was. was happy. As that him. was the Attitude Era, man. The Attitude Era was crazy. Like, like back then, I would never think that that would not be okay now. I, I feel oh, like no, no. the Attitude Era would not no. work right now because people would be too offended. People are so soft nowadays, man. Fuck, Honestly, yeah. I feel like society has changed in general. It's uh, like that's why it's all PG. Social outrage, bro. Like people get their kicks out of getting mad. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah. It's fucking whack. Hell yeah, for it's sure. Super super whack. Because like uh, people were all <laughs> upset that the WWE did the Saudi Arabia deal. Like it's fucked up both ways, man. But I mean, it is. But at the end of the day, you, you know how Vince is, bro. It's Vince all about, about money. that bag, bro. It's all about Vince, that money, Vince baby. Gets his bag. He's already a billionaire, bro. Like, no, I what mean, not more yet. Do you need? Not, he's not yet. A billionaire? No, not yet. Uh, not, is this storyline so, billionaire? He's, he's trying to get up there from my, you know, WWE is not I a heard. billion dollar company. He's not. He's oh, not. He's not. WWE oh, okay. is a billion. You know, it's a billion dollar company. But him personally, you know, his his financial, you know, gains. Nah, he's he's not up there yet. Yeah. Is he with his wife? Dude, nah, this nah, nah. man is so crazy. He did a storyline divorce with his wife where he was fucking on some young ass Trish Stratus, bro. Oh, like, what man. the fuck, dude? That shit was lit, that shit, People, <laughs> that shit would be on TMZ today if that shit was happening. Bro, that shit was like low-key softcore porn. <laughs> Sometimes, bro. Yo, Edge and Lita, they fucked on TV. Yo, yeah, hell yeah, they did. Hey, there was like allegedly a video, too, where like she actually showed her breasts or like it was like, like a, a nip, nip slip, slip or some shit like that, but they were literally getting, getting dude, it all had, on that motherfucking they ring. They previewed this live sex page for like a month. Dude, mm. remember... My bad. Remember TCW? They had that stripper chick. Like oh, in yeah, between yeah, breaks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like if she wasn't even a wrestler. She was just a stripper chick. And then she's yep. all in the fucking Hall of Fame and shit now or yep, whatever. Yep, what yep. the fuck? <laughs> Dude, wrestling is wild though. But honestly, like if you really think about it, kind of like a soap opera. You know what yeah. I mean? Like honestly, like it's all like, you know, banging or whatever, storylines type shit. And at the end of the day, they hash it out and just move on to somebody else type yeah. shit. Like like any fun the fucking novella. You know what I mean? What what you think is a good storyline when they drag it out over like the whole year? Or if it's just like pay-per-view to pay-per-view? Honestly, I feel like the more hype it is, the more better I feel like the match or, you know, the outcome is going to be. Cause Do you like, like like short like short storylines to me like every pay per view like it gets like it gets easy boring to dude like it's all yeah it's all like just quick like you don't you don't really you know build into it you just like all right cool so you 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 go with this guy all right you're a heel you're a good you you know your baby face blah 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 you talk shit to each other for like a couple weeks all right cool you hash it out there it's over you take the L and like, the next no, guy dude yeah. like that's just boring. Like back then they you they used to do that shit for like two to three months. I don't know. Hype that shit up. I don't know, you know how what I mean? the when uh, the Rock came back and challenged John Cena a year in advance and it still fucking worked. You remember that? Exactly what I mean. Because they built it up, bro. That was like a uh, It was like you, literally you the day them. after like so WWE kinda has like a season in a way. It's from yeah, yeah, that's true. It's from WrestleMania. After WrestleMania ends, it's the start of a new a whole new shit, man. Yep. So yep. they bring in new people from their old so there's NXT, like all their uh, developmental territories yep. and shit. Yep. They bring people up. So after WrestleMania, it's pretty fucking lit. Like yep. there's new wrestlers, there's new storylines, shit gets switched up. And then back in the day, the Rock showed up the day after WrestleMania when John Cena won the title and challenged him to the next WrestleMania, literally yep. a year in advance. Yep. And dude, that match was fucking lit. The that Rock match and John was Cena lit. went that at it. That match was lit, bro. For The Rock being out, you know, what was it, like seven years, you said? Yeah. Seven, eight years, dude. He still layeth the smack down on John Cena, What's your bro? opinion on John Cena? He's like the face of WWE for the last few years. John except, Cena, John Cena. Recently. He said it himself. He said it himself. I remember that one time when he cut that promo with AJ Styles. I was built for the WWE, bro. Like I was made for this shit. You know, you know how AJ. Hey, shout out AJ though. Dude, shout out AJ though. He's my favorite. AJ. Wrestler. AJ is the top indie dog that I ever seen in my life. I have a song named Phenomenal hey. that I got inspired by AJ Styles. Hey, Go check show, that shit out. Glorious. Show, but AJ is one of the top indie guys. But John Cena, honestly, was built for the WWE. Like, he had it all. He had the looks. He had the body. You know, he had the charisma. charisma. Like, he you just had it all. remember his debut? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Dude. Dude, I still remember watching that shit. I remember watching that shit. Kurt Angle's all like, if anybody back there, you know, 
wants to challenge me, like, come on, like, basically an open challenge. And here comes John Cena, unknown, Nobody knows with him. a generic ass motherfucking song. Little He's just ass coming out, little shorts. ass shorts. Not the George, He's all like, bro. yeah, not the, not, not the George, not the George, not, nah. He's like, you can't see me type shit. Like, he was like, literally a product, a prospect coming out of, you know, of the WWE, and he challenged one of the goats. One of the goats. He smacked him. He held ah, his ground. Fucking smacked the goat, yeah. bro. He's all like, he's all like ruthless aggression, and that's when it started the whole shit. Dude. That was he's when like, it started. Bam! So it went from attitude era to the ruthless aggression. To the ruthless aggression. He's like, what are you here? What's your name? What are you here for? I'm John Cena. You know, like just fucking just starting ruthless aggression, just slap the shit out of Angle. And he went two for two with Angle, dude. Like they were just going at it. Angle was all like, oh shit. Like he was just surprised as shit. He's like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, who this fucking rookie? You know what I mean? And then John Cena was holding his own and he even got respect and dads from the Undertaker, bro. Like that was just crazy. Backstage, he's yeah. like, Hey, what's your name? John Cena. I was like, All right, cool. I respect, bro, you know, I respect what you You know, did like right the there. behind the story scenes of the Undertaker? How he's like the fucking he's dog, bro. That's his yard and shit. Oh like, yeah, hell yeah, hell dude, yeah. The Undertaker be running shit behind. He commanded the scenes. respect, like whatever Taker said, you know, backstage or whatever. Like that was that was it. Have like, you heard of Wrestlers Court? Nah. So Wrestlers Court, like when somebody fucked up backstage, like mm -hmm. there was literally like the Undertaker was the judge, and then like all the OGs and shit, they would be like, "Well, your punishment, you can't fucking ride along with us for like two months or whatever and yeah, shit." Yeah, yeah. Like they had like their own shit that they would set hash out the beefs or like any problems backstage and shit like that. Oh, but, for real? Yeah, but oh, I just shit. heard I just heard recently like the WWE like cracked down on it. They're like not allowed to do that shit mm -hmm. no more because of Enzo. Because when Enzo fucked up and got kicked off his tour bus or oh, whatever, yeah, 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 yeah. they were like, oh. It was like, it was like Roman Reigns and yeah, I don't know Roman who Roman Reigns is the guy that Like somebody else kicked him out. Like, Because I've I heard like the Miz got kicked out like that back in the day too yeah. and shit. They're like, hey, like you got to respect, you know, whatever boundaries or whatever set rules that the OGs set. And like, obviously, if you don't respect them, then your ass ain't gonna, you know, yeah. ride along or. Who would have ever thought the Miz would have been the Miz now, dog? That's the Miz true, man. came off of the real world on MTV. He was a fucking clown, bro. <laughs> really he was a clown, true, man. Though. And then but now... I, I just felt like he always had that persona, that charisma that helped him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that obviously elevated to him. Honestly, I feel like, if anything, Miz is, like, better when he's heel than when he's babyface. Yeah. Because it's once he's heel, to, dude... to like, hate him than he, it is to like yeah, him. Yeah, he, he, he just speaks facts. I, I don't know if you remember that, that one time when he did that promo with the Intercontinental... Like, dude, this is the most, this, literally, this is the most prestigious belt on the WWE Let's get into that roster right now. right now. What's really the most prestigious belt? Right now or, like, in general? Yeah, in general. Well, in general, obviously, you know you know what it is, fam. It's the WWE Championship. WWE Championship. You think having so many belts, uh, basically a copy of each on each, each show, is that too saturated? Yeah. Yeah. I honestly feel like it's just watered down. Like, the other ones are watered down. It doesn't compare to the top, you know, to the top belt in that in, in, in that company. You know what yeah. I mean? I've never, like, fucked with the Universal belt. It's just kind of, like, No, nah, honestly, like... like you're the they, champion of the universe? Like, like the, the, they, they literally just added that, you know, for ratings, for, obviously, to, to compensate the other brand that's on there. Because, you know... They split them up or whatever. They have it's the raw brand. Yeah, yeah. They it basically become. It's not like thing. even WWE. It's SmackDown, Raw, and then like NXT. Like everybody has their own champion and shit. Yeah, but even then, though, I just feel like the WWE obviously the championship has to be up here. And then to me, honestly, the second one would be the Intercontinental. Dude, the Intercontinental title is shit, bro. Yeah, it's like, prestigious, and it came from WCW yeah. when they when, when they bought it out. That, that's where that that's where the uh, intercontinental. I mean, uh, intercontinental and the U.S. You know, the U.S. Championship came out as well. U.S. Championship is pretty dope too. I like how they do the open challenge with that one. I feel like they should just keep it. Like if you're the U.S. Champion, you have to fucking defend it in an open challenge. Oh hell yeah! I think that would be hell sick. Yeah. What do you think about that twenty four seven though? It's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool, dude. It's entertaining. I like how it switches a lot. Like it's kind of like I feel like it's the YouTube Championship. Honestly, yeah. Like, honestly, like, like, I just feel like they're doing it for clout, you know, for exposure. Like, dude, like, that, that shit could change in a minute, you know what I mean? So, like, obviously, you're going to be curious. Like, our truth is 10 times Dude, champion. he's a 10 time, 10 time, 10 time, 10 time, 10 time. Our truth has never even champion. won, like, a mid card championship, I think. Hasn't he? He's probably won the US title, I feel. 
Probably. Probably like, like one Do you of remember those. when he was main eventing with John Cena? They gave him like a oh, quick yeah. break hell right yeah. there. Hell yeah. He had some sick matches, that. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our truth is legit. Yeah. Our truth legit. Like, he's cool. Like, he, he's a cool mid Carter that, you know, that deserves some respect. I respect that motherfucker because he stays in shape, dog. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, dude he's like 45, 46 he has years old. Not falling off with that nope. bod. No homo. Nope. Dude, that guy no is homo. ripped. Yep. He's sexy as fuck, dog. Yep. Like, if you want a body, like, yeah, our truth is the truth, Bruh, and, and he's old, bro. Like he's old. He's like 46, 47 and it's like, dude, what the fuck? You still keeping this body like no homo? Like you stamina? Like dude, but like what the hell? Yeah, like dude, you've been putting in work in the motherfucking gym. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, hell yeah. I respect. I, I that. feel like WWE respects that too. That's why they're giving him so much opportunity oh, oh, right for sure, now. For sure, for sure. But That's yeah, what I feel too. the, the twenty four seven title is tight. I like it right now. Uh, who knows how long it would last? Eventually, That's I true. feel like it'll get get old. Yeah, like it will die down. You know, obviously. I miss the hardcore title. That's what I feel like they brought this title back. You know what I mean? Kind of to replace the hard, that. Yeah, because the, the hardcore title was just like it's legit too. It's like basically twenty four seven. Any you know anywhere any place anytime even falls women could have won that shit. Hell Remember, yeah, uh, Mo- Molly Holly won that shit. I think so. Yeah, I think China had it for a second too. Yep. yep. Dude, it was, it was popping, dude. It was popping. Yeah, fucking. Popping. Um, okay, so world heavyweight championship, the big gold one. You know the one that Batista had, the one that Goldberg had, the one that know, the Rock had, the one the Rock had, or the WWE title. Where we at on this? Where we at on this? Oh man. First off, what, let's what, go. What are we talking about, though? We're talking about... Let me break it down. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Break it down. Break so, it down. we'll break it down to three categories. First okay. off, what title looks better? Oh, the, WC, the, the WCW one. World no WWE doubt. Title. Shh, that no shit doubt. is so beautiful. That shit just like... I'm going to put a picture cold. right here for you guys. Like, it's just going to be a picture right here of the WCW one, man. That shit was just like... That's like what you wanted to have. You know what I mean? That was just like what you worked for, what you sacrificed, what you, you know, fucking traveled... 300 and I don't know how many days out the motherfucking year. That's what you worked for, dude. Like, I felt like that was just the most prestigious. Because it was most never like. Decorated. It was never like the WCW title. It was never like the NWA title. It was just always the world, the world heavyweight, heavyweight champion. championship. Bro. Which is bullshit that they didn't want to let Ray do it too because he wasn't heavyweight. But that's true. That's true. Their shit is so weird. Like, Cruiserweight is 205. What That's the true. fuck? 205 That's is true. light heavyweight in the UFC, bro. That's true. That's true. Like, you expect me to believe that Drew Gallag can fucking fight uh, fucking John Bones Jones? Hell no. no. Hell no. Hell, hell no, you can't. no. Hell no, you can't. I, I, but that's true, I expected like little dudes for the cruiserweight titles, but they freaked well, their own. Well, you know? yeah. But, I mean, you know, back then they used to have the light heavyweight championship. Remember yeah, that? Like, they, they even broke it down they, like they, that. They discontinued that shit, but... Dude, for, for for me though, belt wise, it was just the world heavyweight man. Who had the better champions? That's the second second point I want to get oh, to. Oh shit! Obviously WWE, the WWF. Come on now. So which title is more prestigious? Third point. WWF. WWF. The WWF. WWE title. Yeah, but WWF, WWE. I agree. Bro, they had the Rock. They had Stone Cold. Triple H. They had Hulk Hogan. Daniel Bryan. Triple H. John Cena, Daniel Bryan. Ric Flair. Andre the Giant. Fucking um, the Ultimate Warrior. Randy Savage. Dude, they had all the goats. They had all the goats. How do you feel baby. about Randy Savage? You think his character would work today? Yeah. Think so? Yeah. I think it's too flamboyant. I don't think people would fuck with it. It's a different world. It's a different world, That's man. That's true. You never know. Honestly, you just never know with wrestling, bro. I just, I, honestly, I, I feel like he'll have the pop like he did back then. Back then, he was just like royalty. He was just like the he it was. guy. He, he was, was just the it guy, bro. He mm-hmm. was just, when he had uh, Miss Elizabeth and the other girl, like he had. Bro, he, he came out like on this moving carriage shit. Yeah, dude. Like just Randy Savage. He was too fly to even walk Randy to the Savage ring, is just a fucking savage, literally. That's why his name was Randy Savage, dude. Like he was the main event. He was a top guy. Rest his, in peace, though. Rest in voice, peace, to Randy like, Savage. He, though. Did he really talk like that? Or was that always in character? Uh, I think he really talked like that too. Yeah, damn. That'd be oh, kind yeah. of annoying. No, oh, yeah, I think he really talked like that too. I think it'd be annoying to talk to DMX. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. He'd be so, fucking barking every two right. minutes and shit. So before we get into the botches, we're gonna do a botch reaction in this podcast. This is first. We're gonna throw a video up and we're gonna react to that shit as we watch it. But first, all right, there was one of the points that I wanted to get to was about the factions. All right, 
What factions did you like? What factions do you think were the best ones? Let me know. I mean, honestly, we gotta mention DX. Okay, let's go with let's let's not mention DX. Well, All we're right. gonna mention them, but like DX has already established themselves so much that they're like beyond the goats already. They had Triple H, okay, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels. Billy Gunn, okay, who is now he's been everywhere. Yeah, he's been yeah, everywhere. He yeah, works he works behind the scenes now. Yeah, he has. The road dog Jesse James. The road dog works behind the scenes now. Yep. China, China, legendary. They had Mike Tyson in that bitch for a little bit. Yep, dope. Shout out Mike Tyson. Yep. That X Pac. X Pac, dude, he was sick, bro. He was so underrated, man. He was. He was, he was so underrated, he was. bro. And then what people seem to forget is my boy. Uh, what the fuck was his name? Uh, Rude. Oh, uh, Rick Rude. Rick Rude. He was, he was the shit. original. He was the OG. He was the one. He was one of the guys who fucking established that dude. What happened to him? Why did he get cut he out? Oh damn. He died like in ninety eight or ninety nine. Oh damn. I feel That's why, bro. That's why. Rest in peace. He was one of the original dudes. It was him, China. Um, he was a Triple badass, H, bro. Triple he was H like and Shawn like Michaels, a dude. White collar, take no bullshit type of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, he'll fuck people up. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah, he did, he was, dude. Hey, shout out to Rick Riddle, yeah, rest man. in peace. You know what I mean? But see, this is the sad thing about one of the bro. one of the OGs, dude. Like it's like it's just a lot like, of them die, bro. It's yeah, just, people don't understand that, dude. Sucks. Like they just so much things that they sacrifice. You know, family time. Uh, you know, uh, health wise, like, dude, it's just like that's one of the things that I like about AJ Styles so much. Like, I know he has kids, I know he's married, yeah. and he's like a simple dude. Like, you see him on his YouTube videos, like, he just wants to chill, play video games, ah, for sure, for sure. And then he'd be on the road all the goddamn time, missing for out sure. time with his family, exactly. Like, like fuck, pe- bro. Pe- people don't see the you know, the big picture, they just you know, you just want to see you know, their own little bubble, so to speak, or whatever. Oh, wrestling's fake. These guys oh, are athletes, wrestling. Man. Wrestling's pretty Don't, determined. don't like, knock dude, them down. You go out there. You go out there and take a motherfucking body slam, take a motherfucking suplex, and, l- and let me know how you feel the next day. Dude, you'll be probably in a motherfucking hospital. I'll be in a wheelchair. Or you'll be like, oh, shit, fam. Like, oh, damn. Like, I'm, exactly, These guys dude. train for that shit. Like, man. these guys are determined. Like, they sacrifice. Like, they, they, they're just built for this, dude. They're just built for this. Yeah. It's Long like, story short. Shit, bro. That's true, man. There's certain people that are made for it, and then a lot exactly. of people are not. Exactly. That's why you see some of them are like, oh, dude, I don't know. I can't. I can't do this shit. I, I, I thought I, I, I thought I could, but nah. Being on the road, 355, 360 days a year. Too much. Working on Christmas. Yeah, and working shit like on that. Christmas, New Year's. Like, dude, like missing out on all this family time with my family. Hey, like, fuck, bro. If New Year's <clears throat> lands on a day of a pay per view, that pay per view is going down still. Oh, hell yeah. If Raw lands on a pay per view or like a holiday, that shit's even more reason for that shit to go down. I mean, unless you're a top star, like, you know, you literally put in the years, the work, the dedication, then yeah, you'll get the day off. But even then, it's, it's rare, like, bro, you, you got to show up. You got to show you up. You got to show up, man. Yep. And it, what sucks about those days is like those shows are usually clowns. Like, it's just dumb shit. None of the oh, matches really like, count. It's like throwaways. It's, it's just, honestly, it's like it's literally just to throwaway. have the people there. Exactly. And then it, there's always to like- To sell tickets. To back, sell tickets. The backstage brawl. There's always a backstage brawl. Oh, like a dinner yeah. and they that's, fucking that, fuck each other up. That's inevitable, bro. <laughs> bro. Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, New Year's Eve party, whatever. Like something always has yeah. to go down. There's a gimmick to it. Which is like, if you're not a wrestling fan, you don't appreciate the gimmick. The gimmick is probably oh, like... for sure, for sure. The key, the key, I cannot stress this enough. <laughs> the gimmick is the key to being a successful superstar in the yep. WWE or in any wrestling promotion. Yep. Like, dude, we're just breaking down WWE right now. We yep. haven't even talked Ring of Honor. Nope. New Japan Pro New Wrestling. Japan, T- hey, oh. TNA had a fucking run that goddamn dude, dog. TNA fucked up. TNA, TNA fucked, fucked up, but up they had so a many fucking ways. run, bro. In so many ways, man. Shit, this is going to be another episode. We're going to break down the rise and the fall of TNA. For Total reals. nonstop action, bro. And then there's a new one, AEW, you know, starting Shit. slowly but surely starting to build up, you know, some buzz, some momentum. Obviously, they're still young, you know, they're still starting out. Literally, whatever. they're two pay-per-views in. Taking baby steps, but, but hey, they got, they got hype. names, bro. They're getting hype. They got names. They, they got Chris hype. Jericho, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks. They just got Dean Ambrose. They're getting people John from Moxley everywhere. John Moxley now. Oh, yeah. My bad. John Moxley. John Moxley. Yeah. <laughs> Bring that shit back. John Moxley. Yeah, yeah. don't get sued by And of by course, the fucking Cody Rhodes and Dude, shit. Cody Rhodes. Shout out to him, bro. I thought his career was over after he did Honestly, yeah. I thought, I thought the same thing. But he literally 
took that shit to another motherfucking level. Dude, that shit but started I, I feel fire like, under him. I feel like I feel like, you know, I saw that coming to be honest, because of his dad. His so? dad I never his saw dad, I like me neither. Honestly, I ne- I I never saw his dad either. Rest in peace. But his dad, his dad is ha- so respected. Had that charisma though, and so respected as well. Like he knew how to cut a promo back in the day too. I don't know if you ever saw that promo with him and his son, uh, Goldust. No. Nah. Like it was basically it, it basically mimic what Cody said to his brother when he when he did that A and W at All In All Out or whatever it was. Bro, imagine like, dude, feeling that, that shit was dude. Dustin, for those who don't know who Dustin Rose is, is Goldust. For those who don't know Goldust, like picture. Cody but Rhodes. Yeah. Goldust is very recognizable. Like he looks like a clown if you ever see him. He was a great worker. He was actually Intercontinental Champion for a, quite a while. He I think he was had, like WCW champ too. As well, he was in WCW too. I remember yeah, like him and Booker T something. would go at it. Oh, hell yeah. Booker mm-hmm. T is tight, bro. Booker T is tight, man. Booker T is one of the GOATs. Like that. Now I know why. WWE signed, you know, Booker T from WCW. Like I'm really I happy still to give that, him a chance, bro. Hell yeah. And I still remember the that that fight that they had in a supermarket with Stone Cold. Dude, like I, dude, he literally bro, followed him everywhere. I watched that YouTube lit. video because it pops up into my recommendations at Facts. least like once a year. Facts. Dude. Facts. Him and Stone dude, Cold went at it on that one. What I want to know one. is how much they pay that supermarket to fucking destroy that shit. Shit, who knows, bro? They probably just <laughs> rented it out. Dude, you know what I just saw today? What happened? Uh Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. he was so fucking famous that mm-hmm. he couldn't go to like stores. He couldn't just do the average shit. So like he knew people that owned a plaza. Yeah. They closed the plaza down, mm-hmm. hired actors to go into a grocery store mm-hmm. so Michael Jackson could experience what it was like to shop in a grocery store. Damn, like that? That's how famous it was that he had a well, I believe that though. Dude, it's sad, bro. Isn't that fucking sad? Yeah, I mean like it, it really is, but I believe that. Dude, it was a YouTube video, bro. He's fucking. I mean, Michael like, Jackson was known worldwide, but then he had, you know, the allegedly. That's just fake, bro. What I'm happened, just going but... record. I don't believe none of that. I shit. mean, honestly, I, I don't. I feel like people are just out here trying to get bags, bro. Honestly, I don't either. But he did some weird shit. But I understand because if you know about his childhood, I'm not gonna get into it right now. That's a whole nother nah, episode. Yeah, that's a whole nother episode. His childhood but... is fucked up. His dad fucked his life up. To be but honest, but Michael Jackson's one of the ghosts, man. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Michael Jackson's one of the goats. You gotta, honestly, you honestly, do not believe what the fuck separate happened. The music from the man. Yeah, exactly. I fuck with his music. His music's great. His bro. music. He's he's one of the top motherfucking recording artists of all time, dude. Nobody has had hits like but, him. But like you said, you know, that's another episode. That's another episode, bro. So but damn. So factions. Let's get back to the factions. All right. Shield. I think was dope as fuck. Oh when yeah. They came yeah. out. Shield. Shield. But yeah. I'm very glad they broke them up and they had their own runs and shit. Oh, for sure, for sure. I'm very well, glad e- they did that. Each, each one of them, Roman Reigns, you know, had had the, had the title. Seth Rollins killed obviously it. killed it. Dude, even, Dean even, even Dean Ambrose did it when both of them were kind of out. When Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns were doing their own shit, they oh, were for out. Sure, for sure. And he carried that shit, bro. He for had sure. fucking matches with Triple H. Yeah, he, he won the title. He had matches against AJ Styles. Like, dude, like he just he was just the it guy. You like, can tell right away that that he was like the least favorited by the company. Oh, for sure, for sure. But but even then, he's still a triple count winner. He he, you know, he still won all of them. Yeah, still and won he all bounced, of them. bro. He bounced. He bounced on because, his own terms. On his own terms, because which is, he just was a tight thing. Not yeah. a lot of people leave the WWE on their own terms. Exactly. He just let his fucking contract expire. He's like, dude, like, they're gonna fuck his wife over, bro. You think so? Yo, honestly, I, I already I, hear some heat going on. I don't know, Go man. Like, cause honestly, I don't know if you heard um, him and his Chris, Chris Jericho podcast. You know, talk is Jericho. Hell yeah, shout out talk is yeah, Jericho. Bro. Talk is Jericho because he's like, hey, like obviously, you know, like I don't want to leave him by turns because you know my wife still works there. You know, so obviously, you know, I try to you know let my she you know, she's in trouble expire. right now because she said supposedly Shane is fucked on the pay per view, but she's defending it saying that Shane is rocked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. W- I saw that shit, too. WWE don't play that shit, bro. I saw that shit, too, If you bro. fuck up on their live pay-per-views with, like, a cuss word or some fucked up shit, like, there's nah, consequences nah, for to sure, that for shit. Sure, for sure. But it honestly, sucks. I just feel like at this point in time, just... I don't think she it. needs it. Honestly, no. Nah. No, nah. nah, she doesn't. She don't need it. She don't need it. But, bro, John Moxley is, like, traveling all over the world. 
Get right in the bag, bro. Get in everything, get in bro. He's getting bag. fucking bank. He's fucking AEW, New NW, Japan, Japan, like US dude, wrestling champion. Any motherfucking indie in, indie promotions would welcome John Moxley, bro. With open arms and bags, hell yeah, bro. bro. With bags, because he's gonna bring in the revenue. Oh shit, John Moxley's coming. Oh hell yeah, you know, hey, ticket sales, ticket sales, ticket Remember, sales. Remember uh, when uh, the Shield first started? We we got into like looking up what they did before, and we found out about John Moxley and his but crazy dude, ass matches. Dude, like insane fucking death matches, fucking bro. Death match- Matches that was like, dude, like that shit was lit. Fucking razor wires and fucking light bulbs and like light bulbs and like tables and chairs and like, dude, like it was just like a hostile environment back in the day. And it was like this motherfucker literally fucking he lived for nails, that shit, bro. nails and two by fours. Like, dude, like what the fuck? Like this motherfucker was wild, bro. Dude, yeah, like he literally sacrificed his body to get where he's at right now. Yeah, he did. That's a true statement, for sure. bro. For sure. Before the WWE. John Moxie was wrestling in barnhouses and like gymnasiums. Barnhouses, gymnasiums. He did a CZW. Backyard and shit. CZW is so fucking low key that you can only see that shit if you buy the fucking like the online shit. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like that's how low key CZW is. Like it's like you go to their actual website to try to buy their shit. Yep. It's not yep. on YouTube. Nope. It's not on no streaming like shit. Like exclusively, literally, literally pay per view and yeah. shit type. Yep. And he fucking came up, bro. Dude, that shit was wild, dude. Like, I like I seen some highlights and I'm like, God damn, like my bro, you literally literally used to, you, you know, sacrifice nuts, like you was fucking nuts. Bruh, now I know why they gave you the you know the the fucking lunatic French lunatic type French. Fucking, bro. Hell I was like, yeah. God damn, bro, you literally are fucking crazy. You like crazy ass white Where boy do you type think shit. The new day stands as in terms of factions. Bet wise. Do you consider them or, a faction? Eh. Cause they're they're technically a tag team. I mean, with I feel like guys. they're more of a tag team because they always just to alternate that. more. Bro, I they, mean, to me, they've a been faction, the only tag team in history that has three members. So say like yeah. on Raw, you're gonna defend your tag team titles. It's fucking Kofi and yeah. Xavier, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you're gonna defend your titles at the fucking pay per view. Fuck that. Put Big E in and no, Kofi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like. That's and nobody true. says shit, bro. It's like, that's all right, true, cool. That's true. That's cool, because bro. Xavier, like, I feel like he's like low tier. So obviously, nobody knows about Xavier as much. Obviously, if you follow his YouTube up, up, down. Or down, if you know where he's from. Or if you know where he's from. You know where yeah. he from. Wink, yeah. wink. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, hey, shout out Paige, though. <laughs> if you know where you're from, no, you know what I mean? But honestly, yeah, it's always been Biggie or Kofi. Even though Xavier was the one who's. Started he started the, it. He started the tag He's team. in the mouth. He reminds me of Jimmy Hart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Didn't he even have that gimmick for a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit, a little bit. And then I feel like that's what transitioned into what happened to the New Day. Dude, he I brought remember in Biggie. He the brought New in Day Kofi. would come out and people would fucking boo them. Because like, they were all New religious. Day? No offense. But you know, they were, they were, they were all religious. religious shit. Like they were all religious and shit. And then they that's when they changed their gimmick or whatever you want to call it. And then that's when it became the new day of what it is today. The new day is loved, bro. They pop. They but get, honestly, though, they they're pop. like, what? Six-time WWE champ, uh, tag Dude, team champ? They hold like half the belts right now. Bro, they own. <laughs> they own <laughs> yeah, they do. They own and half Smackdown, the belts right now. And Smackdown, yes, they do. They own half the belts right now, bro. It's they're not the House of AJ Styles no more, man. Hey, hey, hey. But you talk Kofi, about factions, Kofi. though, like you said, the Bullet Club is what runs shit. Globally. Globally, not just not oh, just WWE. I like how you threw that in. I like not just WWE, bro. They had factions in Japan. They had factions in Mexico, and they have Ooh, factions yeah, right Mexico. now in the WWE. So honestly, you know what's to tight, me, bro, because like AEW Ring of Honor, they can instantly turn it back on. They have oh, people that yeah. were in the Bullet Club. They can. They have fucking Kenny Omega. They have the Young Bucks. They have those other Samoan dudes too. Uh, oh Ring yeah, of Honor yeah, has them. yeah. Yeah, dude, imagine them versus the Usos. Oh, hell yeah, that should dude, be lit. As I still fuck. think the Usos and the Roman Reigns they need to build some shit. I think that should be tight. Oh, hell yeah, like a, like a Samoan fucking tag team type shit, bro. But uh, honestly, though, ain't ain't no faction had had a bigger effect than the Bullet Club. Nope, they ain't, took over, not even close, just the hype on itself, bro. Not even close, bro. So, not even close. WWE had no members of the Bullet Club until Finn Balor came through. Yeah, that was the first Finn one. Finn Balor came through. He was not allowed to talk about that nope. shit because that's how it is. WWE, they don't want to talk about their competition. They don't want to do shit like that. 
Nah, they don't. They, they don't like. They don't like promoting other. You know, other promotions at all. At all. At all. At all. Not even mentioning that, like their name slightly. Like nope. nothing. Even at though all. like that shit would bring views up. Nope. <laughs> They're like fuck them. We're not talking about no mm. no haters on our shit. That's pretty much Vince Literally. McMahon's Literally. idea on that. Literally. So one thing that they could not stop was the two sweet. This was the Bullet Club shit, bro. Shout out to the be, outsiders. Shout out to, to the be, outsiders. It used to be, you know, back in the day, the click. The click. The yo. click. That's what that that was their hand gesture or the you know the little thing that they used to do. But then the Bullet Club on top, you know, uh, adopted that, and then it became a whole different story. Yeah. So after Finn Balor came through. There was the Ballard Club rumors that started. It was like merch here and there, little mm-hmm. signs. People would be like, oh, what's happening? Is the Bullet Club coming through? Mm-hmm. Nah, nah, the Bullet Club's not coming through. It's Ballard Club. It's Ballard Club. Mm-hmm. And then AJ Styles shows up at fucking Royal, Royal Rumble. Rumble 2015, number three, 2016, number three. whatever it was. You don't want none. He fucking came up, popped, got the biggest pop probably. But in the honestly, last few no, years. ain't nobody knew what the fuck was happening. They're like, hey, what the fuck? Who's this generic it, ass it says, fucking song? I am. I am. And then boom, they don't Phenomenal. want no. Phenomenal. Dude, and then everybody, the fucking whole nuts, motherfucking bro. arena went nuts, bro. Went nuts, man. That shit was fucking wild, dude. Mm. So that's the second member of the original. <sighs> not, I don't want to call it the original because I'm not sure who was in the original. But he was in New Japan in the Bullet Club. Yeah. All right. So let me break it down real quick. So AJ Styles ran the Bullet Club in New Japan Pro Wrestling, but when he bounced and did his other shit at Ring of Honor and everywhere else, he left Finn Balor in charge. So what they did was they had Finn Balor. No, turn- no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Finn Kenny- Balor was first. Oh, and yeah, had a backwards. Then one, huh? Yeah, and then, had one, and, and then once Finn Balor left, AJ, AJ turned took, on him. Yep. So Finn Balor was the first. In New Japan, AJ turned on Finn Balor to get him out of there. Yep, so yep. AJ took over the Bullet Club. Finn Balor came to WWE, then AJ came to WWE. So they, there's a rumors that started real quick, like, oh, is the Bullet Club forming the WWE? What the yep. fuck? And yep. then the rest of the Bullet Club from New Japan, which is Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, came through. But mm-hmm. they fucked it all up. WWE fucked it all up. Vince didn't McMahon happen. fucked it all up, man. Did not happen. They like, did not he, form it. He just didn't capitalize on what he fucking had. Dude, he had the main players, that was that was That was like a little short in time when, when they did it. I don't know what pay-per-view it was or what Raw show it was when they had Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, and AJ Styles right there in the motherfucking... They were cutting a promo backstage. And then, you know, they were all together from in the club. Oh. And then Finn Balor and then walks it's all in. Awkward. And they're all like... And then Finn's all just smiling and shit, and, he's all like, and he turns away. He's like, oh, he'll come around. He'll come around. But now... Dude, they had that chance right there. They had that but, shit two but, years ago. Yeah, but ever since AEW came into play, now I feel like they're, they're going to take about, advantage they're, they're of that They're going to pull the trigger on that shit. But I've heard, allegedly, from the sources that Finn's going to take some time off. He's going to lose at SummerSlam, probably take like two months off to re-energize himself. And then once he comes back, he's going to join. That's what they do, though. They try to let it die down. They, yeah, they yeah. want the hype on the rumors to die down. Yeah, yeah, And then, boom, they bust and it on And then, boom, you. just take advantage of that Dude. shit. Boom. Easily. Take, take the club. AJ Styles, Finn Balor, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows. Because let's not forget. They're going to run that shit, All bro. these guys signed new deals recently within the last oh, for year. for sure. For sure. So, they have a few years to go on their contract, bro. Pull the trigger on the ballot club. Or the Bullet Club. It's over, man. It's over, bro. They're arguably going to be up there with DX. They're going to be the, the fucking faction to defeat. And even though my boy over here doesn't like it, I feel like once they start the club, the Undisputed Era is going to come that shit up. NXT? I would, I would, it's going to come up and so run me and my shit homie and right fucking... Here, man, mm. I'd be fucking with him because there's this dude, Adam Cole, on NXT. Baby. He's sick, bro. I ain't going to lie. Every time he comes out of stage, I'll do the... Adam, Adam Cole. Adam Cole, baby. Adam Cole, baby. But I guess the plan is for them to start the Bullet Club in SmackDown, Raw, yep. whatever, on the main roster. And then once they move the NXT guys up... They're just going to keep adding, adding, take over. Like, dude, I feel like it's going to be over. Like, honestly, I feel like the club is going to take over Raw, SmackDown, you know, whatever you want to call it. They're just going to run shit. They're going to get the belt. They're going to be like, there is no team in the world that can stop us. If they build and it then right. drop the Undisputed Era theme song, it's over, fam. Like, Adam Cole, Roderick. Whatever the hell his name dude, is. Dude, Roderick Strong dude. was like yeah, an yeah, alternative, yeah. and then he ended up getting lucky, Hell bro. yeah. He hell got yeah. lucky as fuck. Hell yeah, he did. 
Honestly, I feel like once they do that, it's over. That's going to be one of the greatest matches, uh, storylines, whatever the hell you want to call it, in you know, since DX back in the day. Dude, yeah. There's a lot, of, like, for real wrestling fans, you see it right now. It's a renaissance time. Yep. yep. Like, shit can go anywhere, to be honest, and it's pretty dope. Hell yeah, it hell yeah. It's pretty fucking dope. Hell yeah, especially right now, dude. Like, they just... I just I just don't want it to uh to seem so predictable. Like I just I just want to be at the edge of my seat like oh shit like I want I want I want to look forward to next week's Raw Smackdown pay-per-view or whatever the fuck Hell you want to yeah. call it. You know what I mean? Dude, yeah. And Hell that's yeah. that's the point where wrestling's at right now, I feel. Like it's a good time. Shit's picking back up. Facts. There's, there's competition Facts. now, which is dope. Competition is always And that's welcome. good. That's always good. And that's always Hell good. Yeah. Because honestly, I felt like the W the WWE product in general has stale. They got has lazy like slow once down. they saw that TNA was fucking up. Oh hell yeah, TNA just dude. TNA was once up here. They had AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle. They had the fucking, fucking killers, Booker bro. T. Dude, they had all the top guys, and for them to just collapse the way it did, it was just crazy. Sad. But like you said, that's a that's another that's another episode. that's another episode. You know what I mean? For sure, we're bringing Raw back hey. to talk about TNA, the rise and fall, the you rise and fall of TNA. Just you know, that's uh, that's in the future segment. But before we get into the botch reaction video, let's do some honorable mentions. All right, all right. So I just want to mention the motherfucking guy, JBL. Oh, JBL is one of the one of the top guys, one of the top guys, one of the top guys. He had a gimmick change and he ran with it, bro. Oh, hell he, yeah. JBL, John Bradshaw Layfield, he was a part of the Acolytes and they were just a security team, basically. Yeah, they, they just were just went like around, reinforcements. Beat people up. Mid Carters, basically. Yep. And even, and even before then, like, he just, he was like a cowboy or some shit yeah. like that. And then that's when it turned into the APA with Ron Simmons and they used to run the tag team division. Dude, his clothesline of hell is still one of my favorite dude, finishes of all time. He has a top clothesline. Hell yeah, they were like top five, top five. Like, yeah. dude. That shit would literally fucking take your head off type shit. And then when he went solo, they changed his gimmick to being like a Wall Street guy. Yep. Like, oh, I'm a billionaire. I know how to get the bag. Pulled up yep. in a limo. But he was a savage motherfucker. He was a savage. Savage motherfucker. Low-key racist, too. A <laughs> little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Low-key racist, too. But, but hey, dude, hey, it worked, though. It he worked. He put on some mean matches. He Hell would yeah, take he bumps and get bloodied up. He, him yeah. and Eddie Guerrero. That storyline with Eddie matches. Guerrero was one of the top. Top him, Eddie Guerrero, uh, Kurt Angle, dude. Those were one of the top top storylines that I've ever watched with JBL. Any any uh, other honorable mentions you got? Yeah, man, Bob Venus. Okay, hell Bob yeah. Venus. I feel like he was so underrated. I feel like he was just so underused. I felt like Bob Venus had it, bro. He did. You remember? You remember when he first debuted? Like, dude, like nobody knew what the fuck was up. It was literally literally like a motherfucking porn star. Like he had that sexual innuendos, yeah. he had the charisma. He 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 could hold himself, you know, down in a motherfucking ring too. And just his promos were just fucking tight, bro. Hell like yeah. his promos are just tight. Like literally, a, literally like a porn set. He would fucking build that shit up. Dude, he would hype up his he had movies. His wiener chopped off on a promo. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny. Uh, he slept with uh, what you might call it that one stable, that Japanese stable that they oh, had yeah. back in the day. Like choppy choppy your pee pee and if I can allegedly they fucking chopped this shit up. Dude, crazy, when I was eight man. years old, I was like, oh shit, they really chopped up his pee pee off and the shit. The attitude <laughs> era. If you don't know about the attitude era, just go on YouTube, type in attitude hey, era. For sure, for enjoy, sure. Enjoy yourself. For enjoy sure. Yourself. But I just feel like honorable mentions is Val Venus. Now he lives in AZ and he has his own dispensary. We his yeah. own we did we dispensary. So shout out to him, bro. I really respect the wrestlers that can continue on being successful after they stop oh, for wrestling. Sure, for sure. Any in any type of trade, any type of thing. Once you stop doing what you're good at, it must be confusing, bro. Oh, yeah, it must be sure, hard sure. to like no doubt. get your shit together and all like that. So shout out to all the wrestlers that fucking sacrifice their body for the fans, bro. No doubt, no I'm doubt. gonna be a fan to the day I die. I've been no a doubt. fan since a kid, bro. No doubt. I love this shit, man. No matter what people think, if it's and honestly or like there was a point in time, I'd say from like 2007 to like 2012. When I didn't watch the WWE yeah, same at Same thing. All. Like, during high school, I never watched it. Yeah, like, I never watched that shit at all. Like, obviously, I never got to see CM Punk. Dude, Punk, I missed the whole CM Or the Randy, era. Randy Orton era. Or that John that Cena. Shit. Like, all that shit, I missed, bro. So, obviously, I, I look back at it and I was like, God damn, like, I missed all this shit. Dude, CM Punk, but, bro. But, dude, CM Punk. To say the least. Is to say the and least. was one of the greatest, I feel like, heels 
Like he was just straight edge. Like 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 his uh his, like his character was. Like he was just straight edge. He's like he just probably only one of the only guys that his gimmick was to be himself. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, literally. 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 I felt like, yeah, like drug free or whatever the fuck he was, but CM Punk, uh wrestling wise, yeah. He was one of the top guys. He was. He's one of the top Shout guys. Shout out CM Punk, man. Shout out. Try to do his thing in the UFC. Hopefully, you know, all. see what happened. Hey, and, and and that's true though. Like nobody like people talk shit about him, but I want to see you, you know, go from wrestling to motherfucking a- MMA and yeah. get your ass beat like they that. They didn't give him no hey, easy fights, yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah, hell no, dude. Hell no. Like, Mickey, you do that Mickey shit. Mickey Gall is a beast, man. Exactly. He's like, dope. Like, you do that shit. Uh, Mike Jackson, he had already had, like, nine amateur or pro fights before that shit. Exactly. Nah. Like, like you, do, you go do that shit. You let me know how the fuck you feel. At least he had the balls and the courage to yeah. fight in the MMA, yeah. you know? He trained for that shit, obviously. He got his ass beat, but hey, at least he did it. He tried, bro. You know what I mean? At least he tried, you know? At least he tried, you know, to um to convert into something else. I mean, like, I don't see other other people, other people that I talked and shit, didn't give him the respect. Oh, you're going from wrestling to MMA. Oh, you're going to get your ass beat. But at least he tried it, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So. That's facts, bro. Let's get into this reaction. We will drop the reaction video right now. All right. All right. Let's check this out. Botchamania. So the video should pop up here accordingly. And this is Wrestlers Be Botching Volume 7. <laughs> Three, two, go. All right. Let's, let's get into this. That was pretty weak. Who the nah, fuck are these guys? Wow. This is probably like low card. <laughs> that shit was weak huh. as fuck too. What was that? All right. All right. Now we get into something interesting. Oh, <laughs> okay. Dude, oh. he fell on his neck. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Look at this guy. Clown. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That hey, Luke, that's, 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 that's Luke Harper. That's Luke Harper. What the fuck? Let me see this. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't feel like it was a botch, but okay. Dude, who is this guy? Get, dude, if he wins. Wow. Oh, I was about to say. All oh, right. All right. All right. Now we got Brock and Jeff. What the fuck? Oh, wow. That's wait, how you wait, know Brock doing? doesn't fucking practice. <laughs> what are we doing, my guy? Oh. All right. <laughs> he just landed his face first into the mat. Oh. Ooh, that, that, that actually looked pretty sick, actually, Dude, to be honest. He must have knocked himself. Oh, Spike Dudley. Oh, the table didn't the break. The table didn't break, dude. Oh. Is that William him. Regal? Yeah. Oh, man. Ooh. He didn't think that okay, through. Okay, nah, nah, I didn't think that through at all <laughs> he either. He just threw himself. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. No, 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 no. That's still landed. That's still landed. Kind of. That's cool. Oh. Okay. Okay. What happened here? <laughs> He just went from table smashing to <laughs> choco. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he broke the wall. Back, like, what the fuck? He broke the wall with his head. We saw it earlier to the outside. Ruckus knocking parts off that time. All right. Okay. That's what you try. You try. You try. Oh, here comes Eddie. Oh, what happened? Oh, what happened? Oh. Hang on. Hold Hang on. Up. Hold up. We're still loading. Oh shit, what happened? Boo. Ooh, fuck it. <laughs> oh well. We're just getting to three well, two that's one what session it is. right here. <laughs> Alright, so before we wrap it up, we're gonna do our three two one section. It was basically I just finally named a section. It's called three two one where I bring up three articles that I found online that I enjoyed and I think would be interesting to talk about real quick. Alright, bet. So the first one, of course, everybody knows. Number one drug dealer in the world, second Pablo Escobar, has been locked up. El Chapo gets life in prison plus 30 years. What the fuck does that even mean? That means he's never getting out. <laughs> Dude, why are they out of 30 years? Point plain and simple. I mean, I feel like the justice system adds that to the simple fact that they just don't want no, you know, no, uh, whatever the laws are. Like, they just don't want another retrial. Like, Whatever, whatever is set right then so, and like, there. So if he tries to fight the life, they'll be like, oh, you still got 30 nah, years. No, you still yeah. have 30 years. So basically, you're in jail forever. 
Let's let's keep it simple. He's going to like the most like, max security. Yeah, prison he's, on he's Earth. going to the max security, and he still has to pay a restitution Bro. of twelve point something billion dollars. It's like what money? Where the fuck is he gonna get that money from? Who knows, man? That should bury dog. <laughs> Dude, oh, bro. USA is not going to touch a touch a single dollar from no, that not. shit. No, they're not. They're not touching a single dollar. No, they're not. Shout out to the U.S. government trying to get the bag. I understand. They're just trying. Y'all to... not even going to pay the state's debts. Fuck y'all. But y'all is not touching El Chapo's money, bro. I can guarantee you that. Nah, bro. Honestly, the CIA has already found a replacement. This is what it is, yeah, man. dude. Like, believe it or not, like whatever the fuck hey, you want to believe, but like how they say, bro, they catch the load with thirty on it. The one with 50 just passed by. Oh, yeah. For sure. For sure. White, white thing, you know, drugs are still coming in into the motherfucking United States, bro. Y'all got a chopper and nothing's Supply changed. Supply and demand. It is still coming through to this motherfucking day. There's rumors that El Chapo wasn't even the guy, bro. Oh, facts. I don't know if you ever saw, you know, that Netflix uh, show, uh, fucking Narcos, Hell Mexico. Yeah. Dude, like, it's just like, it's crazy how he was a, uh, allegedly where, bottom, where, where Mark, where, where, where he came from to where he's at now. That's a big ass motherfucking step. Yeah, yeah. Like he was like the driver, like the bodyguard, like, like you know the, just like the guy on the side. But for El Chapo, he's never touched a brick in his life. What are y'all talking about, bro? It's just he's too smart, man. It's just crazy, man. It's just crazy. Honestly, I just felt like the government just needed to pinpoint a guy for their actions. Oh shit! For okay. their, you know, propaganda for their, uh, you know, monopoly, so to speak. Yeah. So they got to blame somebody. Obviously, Whatever you got to point the, the finger about, at somebody. Like, when they were saying that El Chapo had paid off the president of Mexico. Oh, I believe that shit 100%. No, 100% is true. Yeah, but like, I mean, like... They, they couldn't do shit so about corrupt. it. Though. I mean, they can't. It's, it's 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 not within their laws. Like, the USA charged them of what... They could. Uh, 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 what, yeah, uh, what, uh, what he did in American soil. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trafficking, extortion, fucking killings, murders, whatever, hit for hire type shit. I just felt like that's what they charge them for. Conspiracies, whatever. Conspiracy to commit fraud. Conspiracy to, you know, whatever whatever the case was. But they just charge them on those aspects. Obviously, Mexico is a whole different ballgame. Yeah, dude. It's crazy because, like, in Mexico, like, they're low-key kind of seen as heroes sometimes. Because they're the ones that... Like Robin Hoods. Pay to fix the roads. Pay to get the Pueblo together. They, so, like... Dude, they take care of it, even though like they be running shit bad. For sure, for sure. But if you get in the way, obviously you know they yeah, fucking kill you. Kill but you. but honestly, I felt like you know to the to the lower income you know households, they were they were gods. They were beneficial to them. They're beneficial because they helped them out. You know, they're literally low key Robin Hoods. Mm -hmm. Even though they did you know the bad things, they still helped out within the community. You know what I mean? They yeah. still he still distributed his wealth. Within his his own people, you know, what so I mean? much money, bro. Like, it should be like there's no way to spend all that much money. That's not. It's really not, dude. Like, you heard the stories with Pablo Escobar when he made so much money that he literally burned a whole pile of money just to keep his daughter just warm. to keep his daughter warm. Like, who does that? I think it was like thirty million, three million. Like, who does that? Like, come on, seriously. Exactly. You have so much money, so much revenue coming in that you're like. They took Dude. account for money that would get wet from being at the bottom of the pile, money that would get ate by rats. Yeah, by rats and shit. Fucking like, spend millions on rubber bands, bro. It was like 10%. It was like 10% of their income that they were bringing in unspent on uh, rubber bands, like you said, or whatever got destroyed with water or rats ate that shit. Like, dude, look, it was just crazy. It's how crazy the amount of money, revenue, man. How they used to come in. It is a it's an unimaginable amount of money. It really is. And I mean, if you really think about it, like how they networked, Dude, that's just fucking crazy. Mexico, Colombia, or whatever the motherfucking other countries, you know, they... I just they... saw this video on Instagram, bro. There was like a submarine trafficking shit, and then the fucking U.S. Navy guys jump off his boat and lands on top, oh, and they yeah, fucking dude. bust into that shit. That's like a fucking man-made motherfucking submarine, dude. Whoever, the, whoever that guy is, bro, <laughs> you are a fucking badass, man. Dude, even then, like, the guy's driving a submarine. How do you still have the audacity to open the motherfucking, the door or the handle or whatever? Like, hey, who that be? Who, who, who the fuck knocking, fan? Let me see real quick. Let me Let's check real up. quick. Dude. Who the fuck's knocking up there? Did I leave one of my guys up there or what? Like, dude, yeah. it's, just, it's just crazy, fan. It's but, crazy, man. Cause, like, but the drug flow would never stop. Honestly, nah, as long it, as it would never demand, stop, it would never stop, Supply bro. and demand. 
that's the one thing, if anything, I learned in economics class in high school, supply and demand, baby. I feel like a lot of drugs are trafficked through the mail. Nah. Over, overnight shit, it's not checked, bro. It's only in the Dude. facilities for a few hours. They pay Dude. a lot of money just to get it out there fast. It's, it's too hype nowadays, bro. There's no, too it much, really is. Too it many really ways is, to man. do it. Too many ways. Too, too many, many ways, ways to do it. Too many people that want to do it. And then, man. And then it's like it's your average household, you know, people. Like, it's like, it's, it's not even drug dealers that you think are drug dealers. You know what I mean? Like, it's just normal ass, everyday, nine to five type people. You yeah. know what I mean? Where there's a will, there's a way, man. Exactly. When there's a will, there's a motherfucking way, bro. And as long as people are hungry for drugs, it's never going to stop. It's never going to stop, bro. Nope. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you get the whole cartel in the motherfucking... Somebody Somebody's else gonna is going to start it back up. Somebody's going to come up. Either way. But fuck meth. Fuck heroin. Fuck all that. Oh, yeah. Fuck all that. Just weed, though. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> number two. Man, it's the thing that I've hated the most the last few days on social media. People using this face app to look old. Well, joke's on you guys, man. That shit's owned by some Russians, and they own y'all face pictures, bro. How the fuck y'all feeling now? Let's be real though. Social media, I feel like it could be tainted. It could be, you know, yeah. t- taken over any, any time now. Anything that you post on social media, honestly, it's it's not yours anymore. Nope. Facebook, Instagram. Let's let's be real. Snapchat, Twitter, all these other social medias, bro. Ain't ain't, ain't nothing. I've been yours thinking anymore, since man. like Snapchat came out. Like, there's been a database for all our faces because that filters, bro. They like get your face, bro. Your face structure and shit. But that's different, though. Like, I feel like, obviously, they use your facial recognition. Yeah, that's something. But they don't actually have your actual fingerprints. That's a whole different level. That's a whole thing. That's but a whole different level. You know what I mean? Obviously, shit. facial recognition, yeah. They could use, you know, facial recognition software or whatever, you know, the case may be. But, I mean, literally, technically, they still don't have your fingerprints. I mean, you have your fingerprints on the motherfucking national database when you were fucking born. Or, when, you know, when you sign up for different shit, like, job-wise, you know what I mean? But social media just owns everything, bro. My conspiracy idea or theory with this Russian face app shit is that they're developing clones, and they're fucking going to clone somebody, man. It's kind of like a doppelganger yeah. or whatever, they, that's whatever that's, they call them. That's what I'm going to go with. That's my intuition. That they didn't, they didn't, exp- they expected everybody <clears throat> to hop on it, uh-huh. but they're looking for a certain somebody or something. You feel me? I feel like kind of like me? celebrities or famous yeah. people, or whatever, go ahead and make a motherfucking mold off them and like, boom. Yep. Kind of like uh, what they say, you know, people are being replaced. Like, you know, like Gucci Man was allegedly replaced. Or Kodak's clone. a clone. Kodak was a clone. Like, you know, just all these people in general that are being cloned lately and shit. Yeah, man. So like, But whoever knows, like, honestly, like nowadays, like, you just never know, fam. Yeah, it could be you nothing. Just, it could be nothing. It could be conspiracies again. You know, like the Area 51 shit. Don't Everybody fucking go talking storm about that. Do not, don't, don't be stupid. Don't do that. Don't, don't do be that. stupid, bro. You will get shot. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Point blank this and shit, simple, bro. This situation is natural selection, bro. If you show up, man. Hey, it's like they say, survival of the fittest. You know, top of the food chain. Only the top motherfuckers survive. Obviously, the stupid low people that want to do that, then go ahead. But yeah, honestly, you know, you know what pisses me off about that? Is that people want to sign up and petition for this, but yet... Uh, they don't want to do anything about the whole immigration being locked up. You know what I mean? That's fucked yeah. up. They have kids. I mean, I understand whatever the you know the propaganda, whatever the fuck you believe in. It's fun to like yeah, all aliens. Yeah. But dude, these are little kids. They have no say. They they they're doing what their parents are you know are trying to you know get a better life for them. But yet you want to rush some shit. But yet you don't want to help somebody because they're illegal. Yeah. or not. Out of the fucking country, like, but yet you want to help a dog or like, you know, let's say a dog, you know, it's fucking like if it was like animals, yo, everybody will fucking rise up to that shit. But these are actual human beings that are suffering, bro. bro. Like cages. Yeah, cages. But yet you hear nothing, bro. I think that's fucked up. I feel like that, nobody talks about it because it's, it's shameful, bro. Yeah, but where's your, where's your pride? Where's your dignity in that though? That's what I mean. Like. You want to, you know, do stupid shit like do Area 51, but yet you don't want to speak or, you know, or say something about what's going on. It's the era of trolls, bro. Bro, that's it's the like, era of that, trolls, I just man. feel like that's just so fucked up, bro. It is, man. But that's it's, another story as well. You know, that's a, yeah, <laughs> that's a whole different thing. 
So the last one on the three, two, one is one I just, just, just saw. What happened to it? So there's been a new study with cancer, man. And there's another syndrome that has been known to humans that's kind of not been uh, true, proven true, but broken heart syndrome. They're starting to say cancer is linked to a broken heart. It's the extreme stress of losing somebody. You don't know how to deal with it. It's getting linked to cancer, man. I don't know. That's that's a tough one. So I'm pretty sure you know all of you us. You think it's possible to die from a broken heart? I feel like it is, to be honest. I feel like everybody in general, every every human race, I mean, every human being, sorry, not race, but yeah, the, the, the whole human race, to be honest, though. I feel like we've been there in one point in time out of our lives, you know, where we love somebody so much that you just felt like, you just saw your future, your whole life. You know, you you saw married children, grandchildren going old with. So I could see that. I could I could understand. You know, a broken heart. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. get it. I, get I it. see it too, man. I it's get not, it. It's not like literally. Oh, you just got dumped. You get cancer. It's like I feel like it's the other stresses that lead you into your life. Maybe you just got dumped, and then like you don't feel like going to work. Like fuck, you start calling out. And then you start getting behind on your bills. That gives yeah. you stress. Yeah. Yeah. And you're stressed on yourself and you're not taking care of yourself. Because you're always thinking about it. Honestly, it's like, I feel like it's like a PTSD type thing because it's True. always going to be implemented True. in your mind. You know what I mean? Like some people, you know, eventually they'll get over it. Yeah, it's fine. But just there's some people obviously as well that they're never going to get over it. And it's going to affect their life, their livelihood, you know, their future or whatever you want to call it. Like, dude, like honestly, I just feel like they're not going to be able to trust any uh, another human being anymore, love-wise, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, you know, they've been through that. So, yeah, yeah, I could I, I could see that. I, I could see it too, I could man. See, I could see all that, you know, that inner pain, that 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 inner, you know, like that, that inner hurt, you know, that obviously you're not going to see because you're not feeling it. It's that person that's holding, you know, that grudge or, or, or whatever the case, you know, there was, you know, back then that the relationship fucked them up. So I could see that. Yeah, yeah, I could yeah. see that. I could see, like, this is worded funny. Like, they're, like, the article is like, oh, heartbroke, you get cancer. No. Well, it's, not, not it's, necessarily heartbroke, but it's just the after effects the after of effects. it. Yeah, after effects, depression, uh, mood swings, you know, uh, mentality, loneliness. The loneliness. Like, you just don't want to fucking deal with anybody anymore. Like, man, you just, like, I just get home, go from work. Go to, uh, go home and fucking you know lock myself up in the room. And think about that. Shit. Don't socialize. You know, don't socialize with anybody. Yeah, just think about all the negativity that happened in your life, and obviously it brings you down and brings you know your health down. You don't want to eat. You don't want to drink. You don't want to do this, do that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I could see that. I, I could see, see it too. It's a very interesting study, man. Uh, for sure, I'm gonna look more into it. No, for sure, for sure. But I could I I, I could definitely see that though. Like, like you know, like I said, we've all been through it. So it, it's, it's it just it just depends on a person, to, you know, to overcome it and persevere. You yes, know what sir. I mean? Everybody, you can bounce back for sure. You can so take yes, care you of can, yourself, man. You can, yes, you can. There's always more fish in the sea, as they say. Yes, sir. Just <laughs> just to relate it back to the WWE, man. There's a career after the WWE. Most definitely. <laughs> there's love after a heartbreak. Yep. Yep. Yeah, there is. So we'll end it on that note, man. Talk that talk, episode eleven. We hey. went fucking deep on the wrestling. Number one podcast in the world. Number one podcast. You try to do the reaction, but you know the internet fucked up. It's all hey, good. Hey, hey, we tried though. We tried. It's all Three, that two, one. Segment <laughs> is here and is permanent, man. Shout out Rochelle's Jewelry for sponsoring today's hey, episode. Shout out, shout out. Go get your honey some shit, man. Hey, they got they got everything, man. They got gold. They got silver. They got perfumes. They got colognes. Bro, Everything. whatever you want, whatever you Everything. want, they got it. And even got it on layaway, baby. Shout out to Rochelle's jewelry one time. Rochelle's jewelry. Talk that talk. Number one podcast in the world. Raw, two, hey. three, four, five up in the building. Skitty. Thanks for coming through. For sure, man. We Thanks out. for the invite. Hey. Deuces. Podcast number podcast. one in the world. Motherfuckers. Ah. Ah. Tonight, we're going to talk about WWE. Raw. We're going to motherfucking wrestling. TNA. Welcome, Raw and Willie Waffles, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> <laughs>
You feeling them shots for sure, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one man, one machine. <laughs>